Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I'm here to help you finish your Christmas shopping list and let everyone else over there stiff arm their competition while trying to fight off that trip to fan on Turkey Night. Now, what we did was we partnered with Rochester Sports Autographs, the largest JSA authenticated autograph distributor in the United States, where you can get up to 75% off over 30,000 autographed sports collectibles during this holiday season. They have something for everyone. But how is RSA able to offer such great deals on JSA authentication, you ask? Well, they do this by making deals directly with athletes so there are no extra markups, and they choose to then pass that savings on to you, the customer. Now, all orders from Rochester Sports Autographs are top quality and shipped to your door with top authentication and a money-back guarantee. But hurry up because customers are so stark raving mad for RSA that memorabilia sells out daily. All you have to do is head over to shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Again, that's shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. So don't wait to bring home your favorites and own a piece of sports history for you and the loved ones on your shopping list this holiday season. Now it's time to take a sports break. A look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And welcome to your sports break for November 21st, as we are going to talk about some of the greatest athletes that performed some great events on November 21st. Well, maybe not some events, but today maybe a little bit of awards, especially in baseball, as uh, we are going to get into this in just a moment here and talk about your uniform numbers uh, for November 21st. But before we do, let's make sure you know how to get in touch with us for feedback pigskin dispatch at gmail.com is the way to do it and that uh, will answer each and every email that is sent now for those uniform numbers number 77 9 5 49 36 27 14 and number 33 november 21st 1902 is where we'll start and baseball's philadelphia athletics and the phillies form professional football teams joining the pittsburgh all-stars in a first attempt at the national football league now learn more about this original attempt of the nfl uh, on our link that we have on jerseydispatch.com that takes you over to pigskindispatch.com we have a great series on that november 21st 1925 red grange number 77 played his final collegiate game at the university of illinois the wheat Iceman signed with the chicago bears just a day later a move that may have saved the nfl fell but got George Hallis in a little bit of trouble and cha- had a rule change for uh, getting college recruits that lasted for years. Uh, learn more on the Galloping Ghost at a link we have on jerseydispatch.com and takes you over to Pigskin. Uh, November 21st, 1934, the New York Yankees bought the rights to Joe DiMaggio from the San Francisco Seals of the Pacific Coast League. DiMaggio wore number nine in his first season with the Yanks before donning the famous number five that he made uh, the pinstripes look so good in with all his great timely hitting there. November 21st, 1952, the Dodgers pitcher number 49, Joe Black, won the National League Rookie of the Year. Uh, November 21st, 1956, Don Newcomb, the number 36 of the Brooklyn Dodgers, won the National League Most Valuable Player as well as the first ever Cy Young Award. November 21st, 1972, the Boston Red Sox number 27, Carlton Fisk, won the American League Rookie of the Year, while the New York Mets' John Matlack won the National League Rookie of the Year honor. November 21st, 1973, Pete Rose, number 14 of the Cincinnati Reds, won the National League Most Valuable Player Award. In 1977, on the 21st of November, Baltimore Orioles first baseman, wearing number 33, Eddie Murray, won the American League Rookie of the Year. Finally, we come to November 21st, 1978, and Bob Horner, number five of the Atlanta Braves, won the National League Rookie of the Year Award. And that is your sports history for November 21st, your sports break that takes you away from life's little issues and, and things that you're doing work-wise and everything, takes you into a world of sports history. If you would like to get more sports history, well, go over to sportshistorynetwork.com. Uh, some great podcasts there. We have over 30 of them, thousands of hours of listening enjoyment i think you'll enjoy all the different sports and eras that are talked to there with the the great hosts and guests that come on uh, all the time also go to our websites pigskindispatch.com and jerseydispatch.com till tomorrow everybody have a great sports history day 
Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout, and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. You get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history. But as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment. You know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.